that's why sometimes it's called a 1D contact element. But basically it's a 1D element which connects two nodes. And this node must line up so gap element is normal to contact of the opposite node. This is the basic definition. So at the screen we see simple plate which has been subjected to the pressure load and which is constrained to the left. Now I'm going to to the mesh and because I want to make a copy of, of the nodes to create my future gap element. So mesh. Now I'm going to the translate and I'm checking the as my object node and I'm selecting the nodes from the middle, let's say. So I'm selecting all uh, three nodes from the plane as the direction I will check the zeta direction, method will be copying and let's provide the value. Uh, this will be minus 1.5 inch because at the uh, lower corner uh, to, to the right you see the uh, coordinates, uh, you see the unit system which has been currently used so I'm using the pounds and inches. Okay. So copy, so now I'm clicking on tape and now I'm going to the create and from this comment we have to click on the other and from the flyout menu I'm selecting the gap. So this is the main window, main, main dialog box where you can add your gap elements and right now to define this gap property you have to click on this button which gives you an access to the gap properties. So in this dialog box we see several options like initial gap opening, uh, auto gap opening, preload, axial stiffness, transverse, transverse stiffness and some of the uh, friction coefficients. So at this point I will not tell you everything about all of these options but uh, I just made some uh, simple examples. So in th that case let's click on this initial gap opening and uh, I will I will keep this value zero because I my wish is to let's say keep the gap element closed. So this is the one option. You can uh, you can add some values, and we will make another example in next uh, few minutes. So initial gap opening. Let's keep the zero at this moment. And then basically to to add some contact. A gap contact element, there is one axial stiffness required. So now I'm specifying the value, so it could be 10,000 pounds per square meter. And, and let's click on OK. So the property has been defined and right now I'm choosing the nodes to create the gap element. Um, there is one thing that I supposed to specify we have to provide the um, element y axis orientation so I'm clicking one and my element my y axis will be parallel to the uh, x of the global axis so that's all I'm clicking apply I'm clicking the second gap and the third gap okay so this is the gap element and right now I'm going to the um, static heat analysis uh, tab and let me add the constraints. So I'm selecting the bottom nodes and I will fix that. Okay. Now I'm going to the nonlinear static analysis case which has been prepared previously. So I'm going to the edit and from the uh, from the all sets window, I'm going to activate the gap mesh. So the, I'm adding adding these elements into the current analysis. So it's okay. And let's calculate. So the calculation is done. The model is very simple. And let's display the results. Let me show you the total translation 
and let's play the animation. So as you see, uh, okay, so I think it's not displayed uh, well, so I will add the uh, displaying of the mesh edges and we will increase the deformation scale factor to 5. Or maybe more. And right now, let's change the scale part. So you're supposed to see that the pl this beam plate has been deformed, and this is our edge of the contact. So these gaps are looking like that. So why the element is called the gap? At this moment, my initial uh, gap opening is has been set up to zero. So now I'm going back to the model. And from the property, we will change that. So I'm going to the edit. And this time, let's provide the value of, for example, 0 0.3. So this initial gap opening equals to 0 0.3 inches at this moment. So let's recalculate the model quickly. So we see even from the graph that something has been changed and uh, in our model. So I'm clicking on the gap. Once again, let's play the animation. So as you see, this is the gap opening, what I told you before. And this is one of the features of this gap element. So, OK. This, this was an example of the, of the gap model. And right now, I would like to show you similar model, which we use, uh, let's say, the same gap properties, let's say similar gap properties. But this time, the model, will, instead of the gap element, will refer the same properties to the uh, row elements. Because we add, in this version, new feature like constitutive, uh, constitutive behavior of the row element, for example. So from this list, you can actually select, for example, tension only or maybe hook behavior, gap behavior, or maybe nonlinear elastic. This is the new feature for the row element. And uh, the only difference between the gap elements and gaps from the rods is stiffness. So in the previous example, we have to specify the stiffness manually, what I made. But in this case, this rod element can use the stiffness which comes directly from the cross-section property. So you know already this button. If you click to this on this section, you can choose the section of your of your rod, for example. And this stiffness, in the tensile stiffness, will be calculated. So the gap length in my case is 0.2. I can add this gap as well. And let me display the results for the row elements with the gap option. This is quite interesting as well. See, it's working very, very similar. OK, uh, of course, the gap can be used uh, in many situations. One of the, uh, let's say, most popular uh, usage of the gap element is the 2 hertz, uh, let's say, line contact, edge to edge contact. And right now, I would like to show you some results which refer to the 2D Hertz example. Let me show the model with right view. Oh, excuse me about that. And now I'm displaying the stress. And these gaps elements have been created between these two edges. So now I will back to the model and I will display them for you. So this is the another purpose of usage of the gap elements. And if we go once again to the property of the gap, you see that in this case, we can use auto gap opening option. So when we click on this option, the initial gap opening, 
opening will be set to the initial element length, so there is no need to measure the distance between the edges. Autograph opening. 